My friends, hello and welcome back. I am so thankful that you are here. So today we're going to continue on working on your GED or high set math, taking a deep dive in one of the practice questions and then doing a few more like it so that you can have it down pat. Now, if you're new here, welcome. But I ask all of you a favor. I want you to think about one person that you know that is getting their GED or their high set and please share this channel with them. Free resources that can help your friends, your family really get through their GED or high set just like you are. So do me a favor and share this channel. Okay, friends, let's get to the math. Now, PSI that owns high set gave me permission to use their practice problems. But if you're working on the GED, this is really gonna help you as well. Let's dive right in. Oliver measures his sister's height at 57.3 inches using a measuring tape, marked with five divisions per inch. Okay, so let's stop right there and draw the 57 is what the inches is going to be, right? And then we have the one inch mark. And it says that the inches are broken into five different divisions, okay? So I'm gonna do my best to just kind of mark this into five spots. So I have one, two, three, four, and then the fifth one right down there. Now, it says given the level of accuracy of the measuring tape, which of the following could be Oliver's sister's actual height? So when we look at a measuring tape, Right here, this is the 57, right? And over here, it becomes 58. So if it's broken into five different spots, this one is going to be 57.2, 57.4, 57.6, and then on to the 58, right? But he measured it as 57.3. So, that's going to be right here that he measured it. But you can see there's not a mark there, so he couldn't tell exactly if it was on the mark or not. And so that's what it's saying. Given the level of accuracy of the measuring tape, which of the following could be his sister's actual height? So he just kind of had to guess, right? So let's look here. We know that it's in between 57.2 and 57.4, right? So let's get rid of all of the answers that are not in between 57.2 and 57.4. So A, 57.03, that's a 57.0, so that's not it. B, yeah, that would work. C, that would work. And then look at D and E. If you know about decimals, you can see these numbers go a little bit further, right? They go, here we have the tens place, and the three right here is the hundreds place, and the one here is the thousands place. But just because you have more numbers after the decimal point does not mean that the number is going to be bigger. It just means that there's a little bit more accuracy with that dollar, or with that amount. So I want you to think about a dollar for a second. If I ask you how much money you have in your pocket and you say, hmm, about $4, right? You could just sort of round, right? You don't have to say, I have $3.92, right? You just round it up to $4. You have about $4. So that's what he did here. He rounded at 57.3. So pay no attention to all those extra decimals, but that gets rid of D and E, right? So let's cross these ones out. Do, do, do. And we're left with B and C. So which one is closest to 57.3? Well, let's change our 57.3 and say it's 57.30. So now looking at B and C, which one is closest to 57.30? That would be C, right? B is actually closer to 57.2. So he would just say 57.2. But here, 
He measured close to 57.3, even though it's just a little bit off, it's okay. So C, my friends, is our answer. Now, if you had a good understanding of the one we just did, the next two should actually be fairly easy for you because we're just kind of rounding a little bit. Jackson measured the length of a table at 120.4 centimeters using a ruler marked in millimeters. Considering the ruler's precision, what would be the table's actual length? Okay, friends, so we're talking about millimeters. So a millimeter, the term milla means like a thousand. So there are a thousand millimeters in one meter. And we have centa also, the CM right here, the C stands for centa. So there are 100 centimeters in one meter. And so it's kind of a fun thing to, to know. And it's something you definitely want to make sure you understand for your high set or GED test. Okay, so considering the ruler's precision, what would be the table's actual length? Okay, so we're looking at 120.4. So anything that is not near the 0.4, we can just get rid of. So A, 120.02, or if we want to say it correctly, we would say 120 and two hundredths, okay? But we just like to say a point two, it's just a little easier, or point zero two. So that's not it. Uh, 120.24, that's not close to the point four, right? C, yeah, I mean, we're getting a little closer, right? And then D is way off, E is, is way off, not close to that point 0.4. And again, we're looking right here at that tens, tenths place, okay? So C is our answer, that's what we're left with. It's the closest one to the point 0.4. So a millimeter is very, very small, and so, it's definitely easy if you're not super precise to mess up on your millimeters. But C, friends, is the answer. A digital thermometer measures the temperature of boiling water at 100.2 degrees Celsius. Not Fahrenheit, friends, Celsius. Given the thermometer's accuracy, which of the following could be the actual temperature of the water? Now let's do a little science lesson, friends. So here we're talking about Celsius. Most of the world uses Celsius. But if you're like me in the United States, we use Fahrenheit, which is actually a little bit more complicated. Now, if you live at a place like Washington, D.C., where you're at sea level, water will boil at 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you are at a higher altitude, then it's going to actually boil at a lower temperature. Say you live in Denver, which is about a mile high or a mile above sea level. Water in Denver boils at about 95 degrees Celsius or between 202 and 204 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you live in a high altitude place and you're making cookies or candy or even cakes and it doesn't turn out, that's probably because you're at a high altitude and you have to actually adjust the recipe. So keep that in mind if you're living in a high altitude place. Friends at low altitudes, you don't have to worry about it. Just follow the recipe as is. Okay, but here we are back to the problem. So a digital thermometer measures the temperature at 102 degrees Celsius. So we want to know about what accuracy is it. So let's look at the tenths place, and the tenths place is going to be that two degrees, right? So 100.2 or 100 and two tenths degrees Celsius. So which one is kind of closest to that? Uh, some of them we can easily eliminate, right? We can easy, easily eliminate A because there's a zero in the tenths place, and same with D and E, that zero in the tenths. Place. But now in B, one is in the tenths place and two is in the tenths place for C. 
So which one, 12 or 24, is closest to, let's rewrite this so it says 100.20, which one of those, B or C, is closest to 100.20? And the answer would, would be C. And you made it to the end. I know we only had a couple questions, but you have the time now to check out a few of these other videos that will help you even more on your math test. So definitely make sure that you do that. And friends, believe in yourself just like I believe in you. You can get this math done. I have full faith and full confidence. Just remain purely persistent. Peace and God bless.